Awesome, Graham. Ex excellent explanation of your background and a little bit of the sports psychology element of what you do. So my first question to you is, what are some of the key principles when we talk about making salespeople 200 to 300% more effective? I know that you're a big fan of the Samurai and Bushido. Do any yeah. of those principles translate into essentially doubling a salesperson's performance? Yeah. I mean, I, when you say that, when I look about, think of sales in like professional sports, they're so similar to me. Mm -hmm. Like the mindset is so similar for how to bring success in both. And you mentioned the samurai. The, the things that were really cool about the samurai, they were doing mental training before it was even called mental training. They were practicing being present, right? And samurai, unlike you know, athletes or sales professionals, samurai has a bad day, they die. You know <laughs> what I mean? A, a bad day for sales and a bad day for someone playing basketball, you lose. Uh, you don't close a deal. You've been right. rejected a bunch of times, right. you know? Basketball player misses a whole bunch of shots. So it's really, really important that we recognize, man, these skills transfer huge. And what I've noticed is there's a few things that really help lay the foundation. The first one is focus on what you can control. That's yeah. the very first principle. And sometimes we get caught up in results and outcomes. I'm the most competitive person I've ever met in my life. I want to win everything I do. I want to be successful at everything I do. But the reality is, just like sales, you can't control making a sale. You can't say, I'm going to guarantee I'm going to close every single one I do the rest of my life. That's impossible. Right. Right. So the first skill is we go, OK, what's actually in our control? And to be successful, we let go of the stuff we can't control. We focus on what we can control. And then we work on being present. Mm -hmm. So this is what the Bushido did, right? The Samurais. This is what the great athletes do. Mm -hmm. Every athlete I've ever worked with who's been super successful in a performance, after I ask him, what were you focused on? Were you focused on results and outcomes? They'll be like, I wasn't focused on results and outcomes at all, Graham. Mm. All I was focused on was the present moment and trusting my skills. Right. That's it. And then the third skill, mental skill, is what we call next play speed. That's how fast can I move on to the next moment, no matter what just happened. Right. You know, sales, just like professional basketball. You're not going to close everything. All kinds of stuff's going to happen outside of your control, right? You'll be on call after call after call. And we have to have that ability to move forward, come back into the present moment, and be in full firepower right here, right now. And that's a, that's a mindset. Right. Instead of focusing on all the things that have just happened, right, we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then, Jacob, one more thing. There's a whole bunch, but one more. You see these surfboards behind me, right? We got these surfboards. The fourth skill we always talk about is what I call palms down. And palms down is the opposite of reacting emotionally to something that just occurred. So maybe you didn't get the deal you want. You didn't close something you want. And so you're feeling these feelings, but you're like, I'm going to compete at a high level here. I'm going to use my next play speed to come back to the present. Instead of reacting like this, I'm going to choose my response, work on some composure. And now these surfboards are reminding you, hey, we're going to ride the big waves of the day. Whatever the emotions are that come up, we're going to ride them. Now I'm riding back into the present, back right. to trust my skills, and now coming back to the results that we want. The more I'm able to be present, the more I can use my next play speed and bounce back to the present, I can choose my response. Guess what? We're in the moment doing our thing now. And now your results are going way up. Now right. you're giving yourself a chance to get incredible results because you didn't leave the present moment mm -hmm. based on being rejected, based on something not going your way. So sales and athletes, it's the same. Right. The great athletes, they, they simply deal with failure better than everyone else. Right. The great sales professionals I've seen, they do the same thing. Right. And so it's not about I'm going to make sure I close everything. It's, hey, I'm really good when things don't go my way. And when that's the case, now, you know, for example, I work with Top Golf. Top Golf right. is a massive company that's growing exponentially. I started working with their sales department about two years ago. And the first thing we started doing was simply introducing this language, the same language we just talked about mm -hmm. now. Be present, next play speed, palms down. And as we started to introduce it, all the sales managers, all the sales leaders, no matter what the results were, they were like, Graham, every time we choose our response, palms down. Every time we're present, locked in, focused on what we can control, it's crazy what happens to the results. Like right. crazy. They go way up. So the discipline is, 
Stay focused on what you can control. Put your competitive nature into that, Jacob. Right. We start to see results that what I what I love is when results blow your own mind. So yeah. way beyond what you could even imagine, simply because you're doing the mental training so deeply and trusting all of the process and really becoming powerful in the present and you bounce back super fast. Now, all of a sudden you're, you're finding flow, right. right? Like we call it the zone. Now you're like, wow, I'm in like a really good space here. Even if things don't go my way, or even if they do go my way, I'm still kind of in my flow. And right. the more you can be in flow, right? The more we're here in flow. Now we're setting ourselves up to not have a great month, a great two months. Now we've had a great two years, a great right. three years. We've had a great half a decade because we're disciplined with these mental skills. So let me pause for a sec, but man, this stuff is so powerful with results, but the irony is you kind of let go of results and you get locked into a process right. and you trust that process through all the tough times, right? And that's how you're coming out with big things. I, I 100% agree with you because I've been in sales most of my life. I started my first business when I was 20 years old. And let's just say I didn't know anything when I first started, right? And you take things so personally when you first start or even, not even when you first start. You know, you may be 10, 15 years down the, the rabbit hole in some of this stuff, but you perceive yourself as somebody who shouldn't have this mess up or this thing can happen. And you can get locked into those failures like you're talking about, and they just reverberate over and over and over again. So let's say it's a salesperson who's doing pretty good, right? Maybe they're at 70 percent efficacy in what they're doing after they go through some of this performance and skills training let's role play say they had a bad day or a big deal didn't close you know maybe that person's a little down in the dumps having gone through your skills training what would that person focus on after have gone through this training instead of dwelling in that negative place does that kind of make sense yeah no it makes total sense and i think just to start it from the beginning like before we even say we're having a bad day Mm. Right. This training that we're working on helps you completely shift what that means, because right off the bat, we know we can't control results and outcomes. So we're not going to judge ourselves and live and die every second with like, did I get a sale? Did I not get a sale? Ah! Right. right. What we're going to do is we're going to shift our focus to a good day is I did my process today. And, and Jacob, this is called the bottom, bottom line. Okay. So more important than the bottom line, which is where everyone just lives and they kind of panic and they're anxiously like the bottom line, the bottom line. That's <laughs> like that's like an NBA head coach telling the players like, you got to make this shot. Don't miss the shot. The players are going to be like, ah, and get real tight in those moments. Yeah. That's way different than a coach saying, hey, go trust your shot. I want you to trust your shot right now in the present. I believe in you. Make or miss. I don't give a shit. What I care about is you trusting your shot and you have to trust your shot. So now all of a sudden, think about a sales professional who's going, all I got to do is trust my process. Mm -hmm. I got to be fully engaged in the person I'm talking to, fully in service mode, fully helping, given everything I have. And then whether they say yes or no, I kind of let go of that. And I go, man, I just nailed my process. Right. So you can go through a day where you're like, man, I had amazing process today, did everything right. Didn't get any results that I wanted, but my process was so amazing. I'm going to judge myself on that. And now I'm building momentum. So now I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't close anything today, but I already know I can't control that. Did I focus on what I can control? Yeah, nailed that. Man, I'm present. I'm resilient, trusting my skills. My energy is vibrant. I'm here in the moment. That's a great day. Right. So now at the end of the day, and you're like, okay, I didn't get the numbers. You're going, yeah, but did I nail what was in my control? Did yeah. I win? What's important now? W-I-N? I did win today. And so what that does, Jacob, is you're building this real, real confidence. Mm -hmm. And the difference between real and fake confidence is fake confidence is based on a result. Oh, I just had a great result. So I feel amazing. Or I had a bad result. I feel terrible. That's fragile by definition. Right. That means you're up and down. What we're talking about is real confidence. And real confidence is based on I'm doing my purpose today, which is the process. I'm going to judge myself on that. So I'm going to build momentum day after day after day. And think about this as a sales professional. If you're fully present, given everything you have, fully engaged, enjoying the process, bouncing onto that next call when it's done, choosing your response. Can you imagine doing that for a year straight? What's going to happen? Come mm. on. Can you imagine if you put in two years and three? Oh, shit. Now we got momentum that's building so amazing. 
not only does this help you when you're not doing well, here's a really big one. This helps you when you're doing well. And let me explain that for a sec, because when you start to get great results, there's a tendency to just go, oh, I got to get great results now. I'm getting great results. So let me just go get results. That's the fastest way to lose it. So you can have great, great results. And the key to it is, is you go, I know where these results come from. Right. They come from my focus, my presence, my next play speed, my palms down ability. They come from my mental skills. Right. So no matter how big the numbers are getting, you never lose track of the bottom, bottom line, the thing that's producing the numbers. Mm-hmm. And you stick with that. So now you don't get hot for a while and that all fades because you forgot your process. Now we're like, what is hot is I am doing my process. So I long see. answer, but that's how we build momentum. That's how we get through a bad day and a great day as we go. Both of those are out of my control. Let me keep doing this process. And now what we're setting up is greatness. And what greatness is, Jacob, greatness is not a quick fix. Greatness is not, I was able to do this once or twice, then it faded. Mm -hmm. Greatness is, I know how to do this every day. I can do this day after day, month after month, year after year, because I understand this process. Now, if you're doing that for a long time, you got a chance to really hit results that you want. Numbers right. that you really like hitting goals that you didn't even think you were capable of because you're disciplined on the right foundation. I love it, man. And it's it sounds like to me, right, especially in sales, when you start out or um, you you put your emotions in a way that they're tied to those outcomes. And when they go down or up, you're never in control. But what you're talking about really is it's like you have a sports car and instead of using the hills and the valleys to gain momentum, which can be unpredictable, you're building the engine, which you always can titrate the speed back and forth and back and forth. So it doesn't matter if you're going up or you're going down, your engine is solid and you have emotional control, which you can take with you to anything that you're doing. So I love Mm -hmm. it, man. I mean, it makes total sense. And the parallels between elite athletes and salespeople are probably more than most salespeople would know. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, well, one of the really cool things like pro athletes or athletes, they purposely put obstacles in their way. Mm. That's what sports is, right? You're like, well, here's basketball. we got five folks here. We're going to put five people on the other team that are as good as us because now we have an obstacle. So you, what, what athletes do is they embrace that obstacle. They embrace it as with that obstacle that actually brings out my best. So in sales, right, our obstacle is we can't control what people do. We mm. can't control if we make this sale. So we're in the same space where, where, where our opponent really becomes ourselves, Jacob, because there's no one who can stop you in sales from going to attempt to try, to connect, to be present. Could you imagine if I was walking up to you and hitting the phone out of your hand or, you know what I mean, <laughs> an elbow? So the parallel, this is where it gets really big, is once athletes figure out, they figure this out, the only thing that can stop them from trusting themselves is themselves. Yeah. So same thing with sales. Once you realize the only person who can actually stop me here is myself. And what the best athletes do is, honestly, they're the best at failing. And it's amazing. So let's say in basketball, if you're good at shooting a basketball, basketball you miss at least half the shots you take period right so the best players in the world they're really good at moving forward they're really good at coming back to the present baseball players a great baseball player gets out seven out of ten times right they fail like almost all the time and if you can be successful three out of ten times in baseball you're going to the hall of fame right right it's the same thing in sales if we can embrace this where we go okay we're going to look at ourselves like athletes. That's why we're going to train our mind like an athlete does. And we're going to bring this to our competition, which is sales, right? right? Amazing competition. And we start applying all these skills in sales. Now we're bouncing back after mistakes. Now, instead of having like a hard week and we, we crumble from that, like we've been working on, hey, we're building momentum after a tough week. We still got it. Right. Right. And we're building this momentum. So the thing with athletes too is they work really hard, mm-hmm. right? They're doing make up they practice it every day and they understand things are skill set and so if we can bring that over to sales as well that like hey these mental skills if i practice these every day i will for sure get better at them and that's something that i know most of us as sales professionals we have that work ethic we have that drive so it's just applying it to the same space and it's amazing what happens and the cool you know sales we live in a space where the outcome is unknown Right. It's the same thing with an athlete, right? The outcome is unknown. And that's where pressure comes from because we don't know what's going to happen today. We might close the biggest thing we've ever closed today. We might close nothing. 
right? But we're still going to show up for that. So athletes show up in the present, great sales professionals show up in the present and they come into that space. But then with these surfboards, right? We're always like, hey, no matter how big the pressure is, let's learn to work with that pressure. Let's learn to breathe through it and let's ride the big waves and we can make, we can, we can make big things happen. I love it, man. I love it. And it's so needed too, right? How many salespeople out there can use these actual battle hardened skills and not only use these skills to make more sales and, you know, make more money, which is obviously the goal, but to enjoy their actual process more, right? Like when you think about honing your craft and refining your process, that money is a really great high every now and then when you close that deal, that's a great high, but right. it's not sustained. And that is a trap that salespeople can fall into, right? Is they're always chasing that high. They're always chasing that next deal. And you almost feel like a failure until you hit that little high and then you go back into the cycle. So when you're talking about sustainability and building this internal resilience, you're really building a mental skill set foundation that's not just going to be affecting your workplace. It's going to affect every aspect of your life. Would you agree with that? <laughs> you're hitting it on the head. Right. Um, and sometimes you have to hit some big numbers to figure that out. And I'm going to be mm. real, with you, right? Because we think, no, no, Graham, it is about the numbers. Let me get those numbers. And, you know, I've helped, I've helped 15 basketball players make almost $2 billion. Mm -hmm. And it's the most amazing thing, right? They, they got $200 million in the bank and you would think that's it, right? That's it. Like, and they would come to me and be like, holy shit, that's not it. Like you said, it's a, it's a fun high for a few days. No doubt about that. Right. It's fun. And then four or five days later, you're like, I'm right back to being who I am. Mm. That high is gone. So where's the actual pleasure? Where's the actual fulfillment? Because these outcomes are just a quick moment. It's a quick thing. So what we realize is, you know how we're focusing on being present here? Guess what? That's the actual pleasure. <laughs> the reward is the pleasure is the present. Engaged in what I'm doing right now is the richest thing you can do. Mm -hmm. it's it's the real wealth and so i've seen it from so many people that finally got the number they wanted and then realized that wasn't it right. and so then they come back and they're really engaging now in the present right they're really connected to all the relationships they have to the people in their life that mean something and they're not thinking i got to get to some result because they know that's fleeting and what they do is they strive to arrive so instead of striving to always get to this result they strive to be a more powerful being in the present. Let mm -hmm. your energy expand. Let your experience in the now be richer, be deeper, be more fulfilled. And then that becomes the place that where they find the real, real wealth that they've been looking for. Right. So, for example, say we're eating ice cream or say we enjoy ice cream. And instead of just tasting the ice cream together, like you're enjoying, I'm enjoying it. We're thinking, well, how fast are you going to eat it? Can't wait to get my ranking after to see how well I ate the ice cream. And did I rank better than Jacob? And let me see what my numbers are. You would have missed the whole thing. Right. With enjoying the ice cream. So the irony is like after the players make a bunch of money, they go, Graham, the actual pleasure is the experience. Right. I don't want to miss the experience. And now they're really coming into the experience and they're coming into it at a way deeper, deeper level. So I think that as sales professionals, right, we're so similar, right? We're driven for an outcome, which is totally fine. But there's another level to that where it's how, how much, how can I, how much can I be here? That this is really what I'm looking for and savoring because that always striving for the outcome. That's like, that's like trying to outrun your shadow. Uh, it's never going to happen, right? You're never right. going to actually feel the deep fulfillment and the deep satisfaction that you're looking for. So I like having both. Let's make tons of money and let's be super fulfilled. Right? Like, I think that's the key. That's not one or the other. I think we've been sold 100%. one or the other. What we're saying is, no, we do it both. So we maximize our consciousness and performance. So we're getting the fulfillment and get all the rewards and outcomes you want, but don't miss the real thing. And now we have both of those things coming together. And to me, that that's the best. That's the best. Yeah, I love it. I love it, man. No, it's super exciting stuff. It's super exciting stuff. And I think it's something that maybe takes a little bit of life experience and a little bit of education before even individuals, including myself, really understood that concept. Because if you think about it, like if you're playing a video game, right, when's the worst part of the video game? It's when you get the high of winning and then it's over. What do you want to do? You're like, well, let's go another round, right? So it's yeah. almost 
just as much emphasis as on achieving the goal and the outcome, but enjoying that process and creating it in such an articulate, masterful way that every day you wake up and you're like, dude, I get to play this badass game. You know what I mean? And that's really what we're after. So I'm 100% for it. Now, when we talk about, you know, sales and outcomes and some of these things, when you work with people like, you know, Top Golf, who are this huge, amazing industry that's really like on world domination status when it comes to their industry, what are some of the biggest hangups that you see with most of the guys that you interact with? Are there any things that maybe uh, pop up in your mind as like the number one obstacle or challenge that a lot of these guys face? Yeah, you know, that's a really, really good question. Sometimes people have never had an experience with this, right? So it's brand new for them. They're like, hey, I simply am brand new. And when something's brand new for you, you have to kind of go through that rookie experience, right? right. And so I think some of the obstacle is, hey, learning this at first uh, might be a, you know, a little bit uncomfortable or might feel like doing a new pattern. So you do have to embrace that, right? And that's why we call this mental training. Because like any training you do, right? Anytime you're doing something new, there's going to be a little bit of being a little bit uncomfortable, right? It might be a new language where you're like, hey, don't focus on results. Graham, I've focused on results my whole life. I've had great results. What are you talking about, right? <laughs> and so that initial thing um, can, can take a little bit of courage. It can be a little bit vulnerable. But this is where the most profound thing happens, where victory goes to the vulnerable. So that kind of, when something's new for someone, right? There, it can look like there's a barrier there. Mm -hmm. But the first step is going, you know, I'm okay not knowing. I'm going to allow myself to not be perfect. I'm going to allow myself to not have to like know this stuff 100%. Um, and then allow myself to go into that. Right. So that's what the scene is kind of like the main barrier. It's just kind of going, you might have already had uh, amazing success in your life. So you're like, why would I try something different? That tends to be some of the barriers that I've noticed. Once people start getting into this, um, Jacob, it's the only barrier is if you're not applying yourself. Right. You know, it's like anything. Like you, you have to apply yourself. Uh, that's why you know this isn't luck, right? Because if you don't do it, it's not going to work for you, which actually makes me feel good because that means if you do do it, it is going to work for you, <laughs> right? So I think another barrier might be people are someone's looking for a quick fix, oh, right? Yeah. Someone's looking for like that overnight success. This wouldn't be that place because this is real, right? This is like, hey, if I put in my 10 minutes a day, if I'm getting my reps every day, I'm going to build this up over time. And it's going to be a real skill that I have that doesn't fade away, mm -hmm. right? This is something that I have. So that initial barrier, sometimes your own success can be a barrier because you're like, hey, I can't tell you how many athletes I've worked with. They're like, hey, Graham, I've got hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm already an all-star. And I'm like, okay, are you feeling satisfied inside? They'll be like, damn it. Why'd you ask that question? No, I'm not. <laughs> And I'll be like, because you're there's something deeper. Yeah. Right. So don't get fooled by that stuff thinking that's actually it. Facing your own self and bringing out your best, everyone craves that deep down, whether or not they've faced that or not, or they're ready for it. So I, I think the only obstacle oftentimes is just ourselves, Jacob, is that's just awesome. whether we're ready for it. Um, but remember, victory goes to the vulnerable. So that's a really big one. That's a big one. I love it, man. I love it. So as we wrap up, I think you've done an excellent job of explaining some of this. So if someone's on the edge about maybe joining the program or, or working with us and sharpening yeah. their sword a little bit, if you will, and maybe they're not quite sold on it, would you have any anecdotes or maybe small stories of individuals that you've seen go from, I wouldn't say maybe zero to hero, but somebody who's like gone through this process and really blown your mind with the results that they've got? Yeah, you know, I've I've got a lot of those. And there's a few people that come to mind. I mean, I'll, I'll just start with a basketball player and then I can break it down with everyone. But Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown plays for the Boston Celtics. He's an all star. He's one of the best players in the NBA. He's one of the most cerebral people I've ever met in my life. Like he cares more about mind. It's It's mind blowing. And he has an incredible body, super athletic, like all these things. And when we first started working together, I would just teach and teach and teach and he, you know, he was listening. And then in an honest moment after doing this for a couple of years, he was like, hey, I didn't really necessarily believe what you were saying when we started this. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, that's no problem. That didn't mean I was going to give up on you because I knew what I had was something you needed. And then as he started to move along and face more and more pressure, he was like, thank you so much for not giving up because now as I'm under this immense pressure in the biggest moments in the world, I'm having tremendous success. And I'm hearing him in interviews and he's just talking about breathing, being mm -hmm. present. 
And he's saying all the skills that we've worked on under these immense moments. So you're watching him perform in those moments. You're watching him under all this pressure do it. And so here's someone who's been practicing this stuff and seeing like really, really great results with it. And then I always love to share it with Top Golf. You know, I work with all their leaders and their managers. And when they first came to me, I was like, hey, it's a language we're going to learn. And I remember at first they were like, you know, we've done tons of sales trainings. And I was like, this is a little different than a sales training. This, <laughs> This is peak performance training. I'm going to give you a language that it's going to help you with sales, but this is a language of peak performance. Right. And they're like, okay, let's give it a try. And we gave it a try as a company. And I started teaching the language to them. Mm -hmm. And what happened was the culture started to take off. Everyone started to use the language. And then you're seeing people that maybe had never done this before, but because the culture started to build it, you started to see unbelievable success happen in Top Golf, where they were, their challenge was there, it was happening so fast. How do we grow? How do we grow this fast? And because the results were so big, we had to really keep the foundation on the mental training, on the language. So I, I've seen a lot of people get really good results who are maybe a little hesitant at first. But as you stick with this stuff, it almost it's almost like it doesn't even matter if you believe in this or not. Like it works. Right, it's right, almost right. Like, like, I, like gravity, whether if I believe in gravity or not right now, gravity is holding me down. Right. That's what I've got with this stuff. It's almost like it's okay if you don't believe in it, but if you apply yourself with it a little bit every day, Jacob, which is how I designed the program. Like when I put together the Max Conscious program, where I took everything I've done the last 25 years and put it into a 16 week program, I made it 10 minutes a day. I yep. made it so listen, just it's just 10 minutes because the whole key is you do it every day. This isn't a nine hours today, cram it all in and try to do it. This is 100%. let's take the time over the next 120 days. Let me give you 10 minutes a day, real simple stuff. So you can start to retain this stuff. Right. And then, you know, and then I, I do a lot of teaching with music. So that's one thing that makes this pretty fun is we all, when we were young, we learned with music and it's right. such a great way to learn information. So in the max conscious program, we train with videos, audios, and then we make songs for every concept as we take you through the 16 weeks. So we try to make it simple for you, make it realistic. And it's something that I feel like everyone can do, right? Everyone can do this. If you put in a little bit of time every day, you're going to get better at this, guaranteed. Yeah, I love it, man. And that's the real thing that I wanted when I was going through my business learning curves and things like that. You, you want the outcomes and you deserve the outcomes and you will get to the outcomes eventually. But what you really want to be, like you're saying, is that present, powerful, business person who comes in there and just dominates on so many different fronts that people are like, who is that guy? Right? Like, what is he doing that I don't do? Right. And the outcomes are a byproduct of becoming that person. So I a hundred percent agree with you. Well, I think you've answered all my questions, man. It's always an honor to have you on here. Um, we're going to wrap this up. Do you have any closing statements or anything like that? I'm sure we'll have our offer presented down low with some more details and copy and things like that. But do you have any closing remarks as we wrap up this final? Absolutely. I want everyone to think of themselves like a CEO. And what I mean by that is we're all leaders and we have to lead ourselves. And in this context, CEO stands for conscious energy officer. That means what we're doing is we're leading our energy. Right. So everyone taking responsibility for their own energy because energy is our offering. Like you said, people are going to read your energy before they even know what business you're doing. Mm. You come into a room and you're present and you're the most present person there and you're choosing a response to the adversity. People are going to be like, who is that? Like, what is that? And they're going to want to be around your presence. So I want everyone to really take ownership of being a CEO. That goes for me, you, Jacob, all of us. This is our offering we do every day. And remember, this is a practice. And everyone is capable of doing this when you set your mind to it in practice. I love it, brother. Well, fantastic time chatting with you. I bet everybody's fired up who just watched this. We're going to go ahead and cut it because we're short on time. But Graham Betcher, the legendary human performance and optimization coach. I appreciate you, brother. And we'll talk soon. Thank you, Jacob. Talk soon. All right, cool.